Hey everyone, it's Matt here. Over the last few months, I've been quietly adding new gear and animations to Willard, but I haven't really addressed any of this process in a devlog yet. How do you go from knowing nothing about code or art to being able to animate a character with fully swappable gear? Spoiler, a lot of trial error and stubbornness. Let's rewind to the beginning. Let's talk about animating. Three years ago, I first started dabbling in the project that would become Willard. I decided to make my own art for the game. I'll just do pixel art, I thought. How hard can that be? Well, this was Willard 1.0. Now if you're thinking, hey, that's not so bad, thank you. But even this chunky little guy was only possible thanks to Couch Ferret's animating tutorial. I didn't have a color palette or a design plan. All I had was a vague idea that fewer pixels equals fewer problems. So I started with a 16 by 16 grid and built out a few other character models using the same size. One thing I did get right here was that I was thinking about a source of light. I decided all light would come from the top right and placed shading on those areas facing away from the light. This saved me from pillow shading, the rookie move where you shade like light doesn't exist. Pumping out characters on this size of grid was easy, but these early characters were about as charismatic as a tax return. I quickly realized that it takes a real artist to make beautiful characters in so few tiles. Yes, Celeste, I'm looking at you. So I uh, went back to tutorials, lots of them. One of my favorites was Reese Jeffroy's video where he shows how to build different characters from one base. This definitely appealed as it would mean I didn't have to start from scratch for each character. I didn't understand sprite sheets yet, so I saved every frame as a separate file. Yes, every single frame. Still, seeing Willard 2.0 running around was magical, even if my backgrounds were a chaotic mess of mismatched pixels and sizes. Here you can see the state of my level art at this point. It's beginning to get a little more bold, adding more sprite detail and multi-layered backgrounds. That said, you'll also notice the lack of a color palette and inconsistency of pixel sizes. It would take me a while to figure this out. Now buildings, buildings I could do. I love that they're made out of simple geometric shapes, rectangles, shading, done. So I created some nice looking buildings, which was a real confidence boost. If I could work with shapes in a building, maybe I could see shapes and characters. I put this tower into a scene, added some of my earliest combat coding in, well, let's just call it a win. Hey, when you consider Willard version 1, version 2.0 was a giant leap forward. Well, eventually I discovered sprite sheets. I also knew I needed characters with more personality. Enter Willard 3.0, and this time I decided to do it without a tutorial. I tried making his hair a little more disheveled and giving him a tunic. I made just enough sprites to be able to try him out in the game. Here you can really see the inconsistency in pixel size in my tile map. However, I feel like my character was moving in the right direction. He's actually starting to have a little personality. I knew I was on the right track, but I wasn't satisfied. It was about this time I discovered reference images. <laughs> Revolutionary, I know. But like my buildings, I was starting to see shapes in these images, and I found I could reproduce them. One of my favorite games I played as a teenager was Chrono Trigger, so I decided to take a little inspiration from Chrono. I added a few pixels and height to my character, but also started to clearly define his hair. The character I ended up with was Willard 3.0. I kind of knew this wasn't my final Willard, but I felt like I'd broken through to a new level with my pixel art. Here you can see him in action. At the time, I was starting to add more detail to my tiles as well. You can see here that there's still some inconsistency in pixel size, but things are getting closer. This is definitely some of my best art yet. I knew I was onto something, but this character wasn't Willard. I wanted more. I brought back the disheveled hair and added a touch of Zelda with the green tunic that says, yes, I forage. This is when I finally came up with Willard, more or less as he is today. I knew I'd need to future-proof the animations for gear swapping, so I animated every body part separately. I created each of the poses I thought I would need and then broke them apart, painstakingly making sure each body part was in the exact right position. In Unity, I then sliced up the character, being careful to follow a precise naming pattern for each individual frame. I created a new game object for each animation layer on Willard, and then I added an animator layer for each of these. Here you can see that each layer has the exact same states but just plays different clips. For example, the body state will play the naked body, while the armor state will play the gear that renders on top of the body sort of like a paper doll. Next, I created a gear library, which held a scriptable object for every piece of equipment in the game. I could click on the doublet and load up all of the different animation clips for that piece of equipment. 
I could then override the animator with those new clips when I equipped it. The code for this was a little convoluted, but hey, I was learning. I had an equipment scriptable object that stored all of the clips. When you equipped it, it would call this equip item method, which would essentially just pass all of those clips on to my animation overrider. The overrider would run its change animations method, which would take in all the new animations and apply them to the main animator. It was around this time that I discovered a little something called the color palette. During the summer, I had gone on a road trip to Whitehorse in the Yukon with my son. While driving through the Rocky Mountains, we visited a gorgeous park called Muncho Lake. I took a picture of that, plugged it into a palette generator, and then adapted it a little over time until I had a palette that I've been working with ever since. Here, you can see my sliced version of Willard in action. You'll notice that I have some improvements to my world as well. We've now got a standardized color palette, and I'm, generally, using the same pixel size for everything in the game. At this point, the game was starting to look much better, but Willard's animations still felt pretty amateur. They were choppy, not super realistic, and his legs were just so short. At that time, it was the fall of 2023, and I was stuck on the couch for a week, recovering from a knee surgery. I decided to work on my animations, but whatever I came up with still just didn't quite feel right. It was at this time that I stumbled across Barden's State Machine Controller series. The series is something like 40 hours along, but it was perfect for me. I had the time. The series helped me to tighten up my code, but it also walked me through how to add some more complex player states like wall sliding and ledge grabbing. As I worked through this marathon series, I discovered Adam C. Eunice's pixel art tutorials. Before this, I would draw Willard, imagine what each frame looked like, and then painstakingly draw out all the animations before I could finally test them. Eunice's videos helped me figure out that I could block out the animations with colored shapes. Then I could prototype a new frame of animation in seconds rather than minutes. Making changes just meant shaving a shape or moving it a little, rather than redrawing an entire frame. Additionally, I could toss the shapes into Unity and start testing them out long before I spent any time editing or polishing those images. Once I felt like I had the general animation down, I could start adding detail. With all the time I was saving, I found I could generate more frames per animation. For example, where my old jump state had just three frames, I now use seven to create a much more fluid animation sequence. Eventually, this led me to Willard 4.0. The animations, as you can see, are a lot more fluid, and Willard also is about six pixels taller. At this point, I hadn't sliced them into parts yet, but I did create a separate layer for sword animations, which are just partially animated at this point. And all this brings me to my present iteration. Let's call him Willard 5.0. So here's what my workflow looks like now for animation. First, I get the latest version of Willard. He's currently 155 frames of animation, making up his roughly 30 states. If I want to add a new piece of gear, I have to animate it for each of these frames. Then, I just export that layer all by itself. In Unity, I find the layer, slice it up, and name each individual frame using its gear layer name, gear name, and animation name and frame number. As you can see, this is super time consuming. So I wrote a script to automate it. I just put this sprite sheet into the renamer folder, let the folder know what piece of gear it is, and it renames the whole thing for me. At this point, I still have to animate the gear into 30 different states. Once those are finished, I drag them all into their equipment scriptable object, and now I can let my code base do the rest of the work. I can look at my inventory manager, pick whatever gear I'd like to start with, and the game loads with Willard already wearing the right gear. I can definitely say why a lot of other games don't do this. I'm still looking for more ways to streamline, as a single piece of gear does take me days of work. I can also see why AAA studios sometimes forgo this. Games like, say, Final Fantasy XV use pre-rendered cutscenes, and there just isn't a way to make pre-rendered CGI possible for every gear animation. That said, I won't be pre-rendering CG scenes for Willard anytime soon, so that doesn't have to get in my way. I don't know that I'll have hundreds of pieces of gear, but I'm definitely committed to Willard having a variety of gear to discover and play around with. It's been a journey from 1.0 to my latest version, and I hope you found this peek behind the scenes interesting. If you're just getting started and art scares you, I hope this gives you some hope. If so, help a guy out and hit the like button. I'm going to get back to work now, as my next step is writing AI for the villagers that I want to invite into this world. Hope to see you in that video. Until that time though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.